So, if you've developed a love for craft beer, the notion of brewing your own has probably crossed your mind once or twice. You might even already know a home brewer or two. Regrettably, the more home brewers you know, the more likely you've met someone with some $5,000 Herms system and 12 carboys in his basement with some ungodly peach chipotle Belgian IPA that probably tastes like something they would have fed Socrates, and a spouse that's already separated bank accounts and has contacted a lawyer. Now, it doesn't have to be this way. It can be stupid simple, and I'm about to show you how. Okay, so first, a little brewing 101. Beer consists of four basic ingredients. Water, malt, hops, and yeast. So water consists of 90 to 95% of your beer. You're gonna want it clean. Malt is the sweetness, and hops is the bitterness. The rest is a balancing act between the sweetness of malt and the bitterness of the hops, and both of them bring flavor and aroma into the mix. And finally, the yeast. They do all the heavy lifting. Yeast have forgotten more in their entire existence about making beer than mankind has ever known. So keep them healthy and happy, and they're going to make you look like a brewing genius. Homebrew shops across the country have made it easy for you. Some people just want to watch the world brew. Homebrew kits. Everything is packaged and measured for you. You don't have to worry about recipes or anything. Here's an example from Northern Brewer. This is a double, which I'm going to be brewing tonight. So think of brewing, basically like making beer from concentrate. In this case, the maltsters have taken the mashing and laudering process out of your hands and done it for you. This is malt extract. This little bottle of heaven just saved you about three good hours of your life. Granted, once you get the homebrew bug, you'll be happy to while away a whole day mashing grain on your deck. But while we're all about keeping it simple in this episode, That'll do. So here's the basic brewing process. First, we're going to start with the water. Most starter kits will suggest using your tap water. If you're on a well, you're probably set. But if you're on municipal water like I am, the odds are solid. You're going to have chlorine or chloramine in your water. Chlorine in beer is bad. It is catastrophically bad. It'll make your beer taste like your French kiss someone who's lined the inside of their mouth with band-aids. And if that's an unsettling mental picture, imagine tasting that. So I could treat my municipal water with some specific chemicals to bind out the chlorine. In fact, I regularly do. But we're all about simple in this episode. So here's my cheat. Bottled water. It's prepackaged, inexpensive, easy to measure, and you can play with distilled and spring water to affect the final product. I'm brewing a five gallon batch. So first I get half of that onto the stove. While that warms up, let me introduce you to your specialty grains. Not every kid will have these. Most will. These let you customize the malt character of your stupid simple stovetop beer. All we do is package these cracked grains into a grain bag, tie it off, and drop it into the water while it warms up. We're basically making tea with these grains. When the water hits 170 degrees, pull them out. Otherwise, I'll make that tea metaphor very, very unmetaphorical. Grain husks can add astringency to beer, making it over dry and puckering. Nasty. Just drain those grains, then toss them. Now we get this barley tea up to boiling. Once it's rocking and rolling, we add the malt extract. Best to pull off the heat first so it doesn't explode and turn you into a Batman villain. From now on, we're calling this wort. Boiling the wort does a few things for you. First, it sterilizes the wort, leaving no competition for your yeast. Two, it isomerizes the rosins in the hops, converting them into alpha acids, which are your bittering agents. Speaking of which, hops. These kits come with pelletized hops. Super easy to use. They come in one ounce packets. So, you put in your hops at different times, depending on the recipe. The short form answer why, the longer your hops are in your wort, the more it changes the aroma and the flavor compounds into bitterness. Those are alpha acids, by the way. Be careful and follow your recipe because each one of these has the alpha acids written on it. You put the wrong in and you're gonna end up with something you can pour on pancakes. 
Here's another boil over moment. I tend to cut the heat at this point and keep stirring until I'm fairly sure I won't have Krakatoa hop edition in my kitchen. Then I let it roll for an hour. How you spend this hour is entirely up to you. Got any twos? Go fish. So I like to get my gear ready. I want you to meet your fermentation vessel. These inexpensive little plastic buckets are usually what you'll start with. And here's the bad news for you new people. You are gonna have to get some equipment. Now, homebrew shops, both in brick and mortar and online, will have starter kits. They're not expensive and they don't take up too much room. Now, I have since, in the years I've been homebrewing, have moved up to glass carboys and then up to polyethylene bottles. And recently I've come back to these cheap little beauties. I love them, frankly. They have a little spigot here that makes racking a dream. They also have a grommeted lid for your airlock. They got your thermometer and graduations for your volume. It makes it simple. In this episode, we're all about simple. One thing you don't want to skimp on is sanitation. Cleanliness is next to godliness, especially in brewing. I like to keep around a spray bottle of some sanitizer. Anything your work touches after it's done with the boil has to be as free of microbes as you can make it because you only want your yeast to contribute to the flavors. Okay, the boil's over. You obviously can't just toss this into your plastic bucket or your kitchen's gonna get real messy. Also, you'll kill all your yeast. The faster you chill it, the more proteins will coagulate, which makes for a product that's really clear. And down the road, you can invest in some serious chilling equipment, but we're all about simple this episode. We're just going to dunk the whole pot in some ice water. Okay, so now let's talk about the yeast. You can't use just any yeast out there. Like baker's yeast? You try that, you'll run screaming from this hobby. Now you got to use brewer's yeast, a very specific few species of yeast. For this double I'm making, I'm going to use this Trappist yeast. This has been propagated by a lab somewhere in who knows where. But this is ready to go, ready to pitch. Again, we're keeping this simple. And into the bucket it goes. We're going to top this up to five gallons with the rest of the bottled water we've been saving. Since we're going to top this off with that rest of that water, we don't have to get the wort in the pot all the way down to pitching temperatures. You know, around 80 will do because it'll even out to a good pitch temperature for your yeast. The concentrated wort has been diluted to the correct volume and now we add our yeast. We call it pitching yeast, because homebrewers are weird. And so there you go, your first batch of beer. It took about two hours, and we're going to have a Belgian double in about two months. And one final bit of advice for you new guys. Be sure you're always drinking some brewed beverage, or the brewing gods will not look favorably on your batch. I might have made that up. Isn't that right, Gina? Gotta keep the brew gods happy? I guess not.